Right, thanks for stopping. What's your name? Uh, my name is Ravi. Ravi. Neha. Neha. I'm Mark. Thanks for stopping. Okay, here's the question, the million pound question. <laughs> Take a minute to think about it. What do you think happens to you after you die? I'll be very happy. <laughs> I don't have to go to my op to office to work. <laughs> I'll be very happy. I'll be sitting somewhere, reading books and chilling out. <laughs> somewhere. Okay, so. Yeah. I will be reborn for what I have left in this uh, in this uh, life, I will be doing it in the next life, probably. So we're saying like your, your good works will carry over yeah. into, is that what you're saying? Okay, okay. So we use the if, just if there's a heaven, you think you're good enough to get there? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. So just like you get into a university, there's a standard, a criteria. Do you think there's a criteria for you to get into heaven? I think so, yeah. Uh, the, 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 in our religion, I, we believe that uh, whatever you do, you uh, you have to pay here only. And if you have done good for yourself and good for others as well, you'll definitely you'll be rewarded and you'll be going to heaven. That's all, that's all I believe. And I believe in that, yeah. Uh, I actually believe if you do good for yourself, good, and if you don't do good for others, at least don't do bad for others. That's what makes a criteria for heaven. So you are what Hindus? Yes. yes. Okay. How did I know that? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I come at it from the angle of the Bible. Okay. And the Bible says it's given once for us to die, and then comes the judgment. And the standard by which the Bible says we're going to be judged is the Ten Commandments. Have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Can you give me one each? I have just heard. I don't know the exact. Ten. Thou shalt not. Uh, you should not do bad for others. That's uh, one command. Specify what bad. I I don't know actually. You don't don't hurt uh, someone emotionally or physically. Uh, that's the uh, one thing. Like murder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's called the good person test. I'll take you through four of the commandments to see how good you both are. All right. Okay. You seem reasonable people. Okay. So have you ever told a lie? Yes. Yes. Okay. What do you call somebody who tells a lie? Uh, it depends uh, what for. If it is for good, I think it's okay. If you are doing, if you are telling for your own uh, own uh, goodness, or if you are doing it for your benefit, I don't think it's good. But if you are doing for good for others, it's fine. It's sometimes okay to. But have you ever told a proper lie? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, okay. I have. And you call somebody a liar. Well, if somebody tells you, if I was to tell a lie about you, you call me a liar. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything, no matter how small it was? No, I haven't. I have. Okay. okay. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be lying again, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. Um, downloading music off the internet, stole time from your boss, or? Uh, yes, downloaded music. Yeah. Okay. Me too. What do you call somebody who steals? Um, uh, thief. thief. Yeah, you're going to say stealer then, were you? <laughs> yeah, it's an American football team. Okay. Is the one that got me? Jesus raised the bar high on this one. He said that if you have you ever committed murder? No. No, no. Okay. Jesus said if you're angry at anybody in your heart, he sees it as murder. I've hated people, so I'm guilty. Have you ever been angry at anybody? I don't. I'll. I'll. I haven't. Most of the time, she knows that I don't get angry. Even if I'm angry, I'll keep it to myself. I don't. I don't show it. I'll, I'll be like. Yeah. But that's what Jesus was saying. It's in the heart. It starts in the heart. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I I get angry quite often. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. One more. Have you ever used God's name as a curse word, like OMG or? No. No. I have. <laughs> Me too. He said, "That's called blasphemy. That's another serious one." You sure on that? You're not lying again. I am. Not, I don't say. It. She knows that. She's. Yeah. With she knows that. I say every day. Every but day. I, she's. She sometimes asks me like, "How can you be this like yeah, this?" Yeah. He doesn't say seriously. Okay. Okay. So by our own admission, we're lying, thieving, blasphemous, murderers at heart. And if God was to judge us by that standard on Judgment Day, would you be guilty or innocent? Guilty. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, the Bible says all liars, thieves, blasphemers, adulterers will have their part in the lake of fire, which burns forever and ever. Horrible situation. I wouldn't want you to go there. I don't want to go there. But the Bible gives us some good news. Do you know what the good news of what God's done for you personally? Any idea? Uh, he, ha he would be um, uh, forgiving for some four or five uh, sins. Can you hold that thought? <laughs> No, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Let's go on that thought. We're in Birmingham Crown Court. We're up before the judge. 
for lying, thieving, murder, blasphemy. And we say to the judge, yeah, judge, you're forgiving. You should forgive me. Yeah. The judge would say, excuse me, you've broken all these laws. I've got the evidence to prove it. You're guilty. I'm not going to forgive you. I've got to sentence you based on what you've done. So the Bible gives this warning, you know, that if we die in our sins, not having any payment for our sins, then we're in a serious position. So the good news is this. We're in the court. Okay. The judge is just about to put his hammer down. Somebody comes into the courtroom who we don't know and says, judge, hold on. Before you sentence these guys, I love them so much, I'm going to pay their fine, say one million pound. How would you feel towards that person who's paid your fine? I will just, I will be like, I will just go in his knees. Thank you so very much. That's that's what I wanted for my life. Yeah. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. Okay. So the Bible says two thousand years ago, when Jesus was being whipped, crucified, ripped, shredded, ripped apart. He was legally paying your courtroom fine based on the laws, the Ten Commandments, which we break every, you said every day, you, we break them. He kept them perfectly. So he's your legal representative in the courtroom waiting to dismiss your case when it comes up. Beautiful illustration, beautiful picture. But what the, and, and on the third day, guess what happened to Jesus after he was crucified? He comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Rose from the dead. We're sinners, we die. Jesus had no sin in the perfect Son of God who came to take away the sins of the world. So he's exclusively the only one that can save you. But what the Bible commands of us to do is to repent, that old fashioned word, to turn away from the things that you struggle with you know, every day because it cost Jesus everything. You know, he suffered on our behalf, but he had to go through that legally so that your case can be dismissed. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. So if that is true, what are you going to do about it? Uh, I mean, I will be like, I will be having faith in God that, yeah, okay, he's doing all this for us. He has done everything for us. Yeah, yeah, same, yeah. Exclusively, it's only Jesus, nobody else. So that puts you in a position, because I understand the Hindu background. Every man, woman and child has got to stand before the Lord and give an account of their life. You know, and the reason why it is him alone is because only he paid your debt towards God and rose again. So it puts you in a dilemma, but I'm asking you to consider this because religion, let me explain this quickly and then you can go. On one hand, you've got religion. On the other hand, you've got relationship. You, you two married? No. Okay, okay. You're just friends. You're just friends, okay. I'm married to, to my wife, Daisy. Okay, religion says you've got to do this, you've got to bow down, you've got to give your money to go to the temple, blah, blah. All things that you have to do to try and get right with God, bribing the judge. Relationship says, all that whipping, I took it all for you. That should break our heart and the Holy Spirit who God promises to give us will come into our heart. But we have to humble our hearts. I know it's a challenge, I understand. I know exactly what you, the resistance. <laughs> Because the Bible says God resists the proud heart. The proud heart says, I can do it my way. My religion's right. The humble heart says, wow, you've done all that for me. That's how special you are, you know? So consider it, you know? Um, consider your bodies, you know, how complex you make your eye. You know, no camera can produce what your eye can produce, you know? But the Bible says you're made in the image of God, woven together in your mother's womb. So special. You don't know where you're going to die. When are you going to die? You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody can tell you. That. It's unpredictable, no? It's like a clock. Yeah. Every beat of your heart yeah. is it a countdown. Ticking, yeah. yeah. God's wound your clock up to such a tension that it's, it's ticking away. He knows when that last breath will come, you know. But what, what I'm saying to you is don't gamble your eternity because eternity is too big to this little life, you know. So does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So if it's true, have you got a, have you got a Bible at home? I have one because my last when I was one of my friend he's a Christian so he gave me one uh, when I was uh, coming back from India so he gave me one yeah I have it. Yeah. No, I don't. Can I give you a little Gospel of John? Yeah. It's a, it's a little it's a it's a it's in the Bible you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, the Lord will. Can I give you one too? Yeah, thank you. Um, because if what I'm saying is true, 
I'm the best friend you've ever had <laughs> because I'm the one coming out in the cold yeah. warning yeah. you know because there is a warning about this because I'll, I'll finish with this the Bible says that the wrath of God the anger of God was poured out on Jesus for you but if you go to heaven and not accept that anger what was poured out on your behalf it will be poured out on you but your fine has been paid <laughs> legally okay we'll be praying for you thanks for stopping yeah, yeah. yeah. all right have a good night yeah all right so